please help me welcome Michael Hauser. Well, this is really exciting to be here, and Barbara's been such a supporter of, of all of us that do this strange art form that I, first of all, want to thank her and the library. Um, I'm going to chat a little bit, uh, some background of, of myself and all of us in flamenco here in the Midwest. At this point in, in one's life, uh, I find myself thinking a lot about my teachers when I play, and I had some wonderful, wonderful teachers, all wonderful gentlemen. Some of them were gitanos, gypsies, some weren't. And I've studied with a number of people. My brother Tony and I spent a, several months studying with Nino Ricardo, one of the real legends of flamenco. And he'd always, as was the custom, greet us at the door in his bathrobe and teach that way. And then to make things worse, he had the window open and it was over a very busy street in Madrid. And so all you could hear were the diesel buses going by and we couldn't hear our lesson. But then to make things worse, we didn't realize what he was teaching us. He was creating at the moment. He was one of the great innovators and creators of flamenco music. Paco de Lucia studied with him. So we'd go back for our lesson a couple days later and would have forgotten what he showed us, but he forgot it too. So I said to Tony, we better, better concentrate on this. Then so I've had, uh, my, my last teacher was another great innovator in flamenco, uh, Juan Maya Marote, and we became very very good friends. He's passed away and we bonded because both our fathers were not doing well at that time. And he actually invented one of the flamenco techniques that are used today. So in the two solos that I'm going to play, the first one is called Rondeña, the second is Solia Pobularias, uh, are heavily influenced by all of these guys. Sometimes I'll play some of their falsettas and the way I do it, half of my music is mine, the other half is to the great maestros that I've studied with.
I would like to introduce uh, Pedro Cortez, who will uh, talk about the gypsy influence, and Senor Jesus Montoya.
charquito de agua me mojo el pelo, me mojo el pelo y la misma agüita me sirve de espejo y la misma agüita me sirve de espejo si me pusieran delante un borriquito y una canasta contigo iría adelante donde tú vayas, donde tú vayas The gypsies consider, we consider ourselves a race of people, like the Jews consider themselves a race of people. Uh, originally, the gypsies came from India, and they traveled down from India, and there's many, many theories how they got into Europe or whatever, so I don't really want to get into that because that could be argued by scholars, really, so everybody has an opinion on how that happened, but the origin of the, the, the Romani, which we, sp we speak a dialect called Calo in Spain, and that originally comes from Sanskrit and it comes from India. Yeah, it takes, it takes a long time to make this. Uh, we're just, actually, I was just talking to Tony, the, we're talking to Dan before, and uh, we're talking about this gets it, it gets, it takes years to learn the language of flamenco because flamenco is a language. When you learn the language of flamenco, you can get on, you can improvise, you can get to the point where it's always so fresh because it's happening on the moment. And every combination of dancers with singers and guitars you get will be totally different, depending on how the styles that everybody works in. So that's why it's always so fresh. And, and it's so diverse because there's so many, within the form, so many different styles. So once you learn the language of flamenco, it is an incredible art form. And that's, that's I think, what projects, is when you get to that point that you learn the language of flamenco, not just learn like a form here and there when you play that. You know? That's, that's very limiting, but once you get to the point where you can actually just flow in the form, you know, in flamenco, it's just a wonderful experience. Yeah. 
In the year 2012, they're beginning to write it down, but traditionally it's not written down. Uh, it, actually, it looks kind of weird on paper when you write it down because of the way it's phrased. It wasn't really, it's, it's, it wasn't something that was meant to be written down, so it, it looks a little bit bizarre on paper sometimes. But uh, it, it is written down now, but traditionally it's pa something that's passed down from son, you know, from your grandchildren, you pass it on to your children, to, you know, it's something in the family that gets passed down. Friends, hang out in the street, they look, look at the new letter that I came up with. And the other guys, wow, well, look what I came up with. And it, you know, and they exchange, like people play uh, baseball or basketball here in the streets. You know, in Andalusia, a lot of the, a lot of the kids uh, exchange musical farceta ideas and, and singing, and that still exists very much still in Andalusia. Me momo.
esa remolina y en el barrio de Trián por capito una gallina que no dobló en las campanas hay del bonar mono y mira como suena la campanita de la noche buena Without flamenco, I always say that without the cante, without the singing, we have fla. The flamenco is gone without it. Because sure. what actually creates, what creates the forms is the cante. Because I could play, I can play within one form, but that could be more than one form. Because I'm playing within a key and within a rhythm. But that can turn into many different things depending on what's being sung. So the singing is what determines what form we're actually doing. So the most important part is to sing. And uh, when there's a dance going on, your question is, we usually, we're following the dance until the dance calls the singing in. When the dance calls the singing in, we're following the singer. Once he's done singing, then we're back to following the dancer. But it's, it's all, and everything you see tonight is improv. We haven't rehearsed anything. Uh, so everything is being made up on the spot. Wow. And as you're going to see with the dancer with Suzanne, we, you know, it's all improv also. She can sing, dance whatever escobilla she wants, and she can ask Jesus to sing as many letras as she wants, and he can sing whatever letras he wants, whatever styles he wants, and we all have to follow what he's singing during those parts. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Susana Di Palma. Sorongo, flamenco. Ole. Yo no te obligo, yo no te obligo, gitana, y aunque me quieran tu gente, yo te soy un juramento de pago, pagarte con la muerte. Y me dijeron que tú hablaste muy mal de mí. Mira si vivo con pena que yo me quisiera morir.
Yo tiro piedra por Susana. A ver, Susana, a ver, Susana.